The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unew Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. evening and welcome to let's talk careers with sarah on armed radio global today is wednesday 10 p.m eastern time every wednesday i'm on the show talking about careers so today i'm going to talk about twitter and twitter is something that uh probably misused or misunderstood on how to use it it is a great platform, better than Facebook and uh, other platforms out there. And I will explain to you um, in a few weeks in more details about Twitter. But I will start with that. Um, there is no shortage of information at our fingertips today. And it's estimated that a week's worth of content in the New York Times contains more information than a person was likely to come across in a lifetime in the 18th century or even 19th century. But with a superabundance comes conflicting advice, especially around job search. How do you find what you need to know, who you need to know, who needs to know you and sort it all out. So Twitter is exactly what you want it to be. It can be a one-stop sh- one stop shop for today's job seekers or just a small but important strategy in your campaign. You get to decide how you will use it. There is no one-size-fits-all Twitter strategy. Also, You can find masterful advice from some of the world's most respected career experts on everything from how how to start your search to how to negotiate salary. It's a genuine goldmine at your fingertips. And yet, many job seekers are hesitant when it comes to Twitter. And they have good reasons for that. And um, with all the misinformation surrounding Twitter... We wouldn't blame you if you were skeptical, but the fact that you are reading and knowing and doing research and listening to my show means that at the very least, you are curious. So I encourage you to use Twitter for your best and know how to do that. We're going to go over some strategies right now. The truth about Twitter is that there are dozens of ways it can enhance your job search and career. In fact, you don't even need a Twitter account to benefit from what it has to offer. Although, I highly recommend getting one. Twitter is scalable, allowing you to participate as much or as little as you wish. You may choose to explore Twitter as a passive participant or becoming active as you begin to develop ideas for injecting Twitter into your job search. And I will explain explain to you uh, how passive and active participants can benefit. So passive participant at this level of engagement, you can choose to use Twitter purely as a tool to uncover job leads posted by recruiters who tweet or read job search tips from the many career experts using Twitter. An active participant uh, user, you can elect to position yourself as a standout candidate or subject matter expert. Those in this category answer others' questions, respond to on brand tweets, retweet relevant tweets, share online resources, and point to people uh, to their blogs. And of course, not all job seekers have blogs, but having an active information information rich blog is a great way to raise visibility within your industry and attract interest from recruiters and employers as an alternative to write your own blog to consider commenting on blogs relevant to your industry 
Twitter is a great tool. It's really a great tool. It's just you need to know how to use it. And look at the benefits of being of having an account on Twitter. Uh, you can find a style that works for you and solutions that will support and, and live in your job search. So, for example, uh, you can find connection, support, and strength. Uh, tap into a wealth of free job search information. Uh, you can locate job leads, connect to the hidden job market and insider contacts. Uh, broadcast your brand and down drown digital dirt. Expand your network fast. Cultivate serendipity. Get real-time responses that will expand your thinking. Research breaking news or corporate culture. Foster a forum for sharing, learning, and laughter. By finding connection and support, I mean that the world of job search can be a lonely place. Job seekers need answers, support, and hope. Twitter is a place where you can find all of this and more. And you will also have find a community that cares. For example, stay-at-home moms and dads who tweet have caught the media's attention because of the new sense of community created by these parents. Individuals affected uh, by cystic fibrosis are a growing community on Twitter. And people with a disease can be in the same room with another because of the potential for additional complications caused by contact. Yet, they can congregate on Twitter. And these people and many other previously isolated groups now have a vehicle of real-time connection to share uh, tough trials as well as memorable moments with others who understand. The same is true for job seekers. For most people, job loss is a time of trial. For some, it is true crisis. Finances, self-esteem, and purpose are threatened. Insecurities are exacerbated by sudden separation from work, co-workers, customers, and friends. Psychologists attest that isolation is an incubator for depression. Whether you have lost your job, are in a position that isn't working, are thinking of switching industries, or are just testing the waters for an upward move, connecting with others on Twitter will keep your spirits up and your hopes kindled and can even help chart your course. In addition to looking for help, be aware of opportunities where you can be of assistance to others. Doing so will make you feel productive, empowered, and fulfilled, even if you might be feeling a bit scared, frustrated, or uncertain. And humans come together in public places in times of crisis or joy. When 911 terrorists shattered our sense of security, People came out of their homes and workplaces looking for community. Strangers became acquaintances, and acquaintances became friends. And when World War II had ended, Times Square and town accounts across America were packed with celebrants. Twitter is a virtual space for strangers waiting to become friends. With an estimated 10 of millions of users, there is always someone to connect with. Now, another thing that I want to mention, that some of the best, brightest minds in job search and career management are on Twitter and available with simple search. Experienced career coaches, recruiters, resume writers, and human resource professionals can answer specific questions. Links to blog posts and other sources give more in-depth information. And following job search and career coaching thought leaders is commensurated to having free consulting at your fingertips. And Twitter's list functions allow you to quickly follow a list of recommended experts. Twitter's hashtag system also allows you to easily get related tips all in one place. And now, as mentioned before, you can search for and I'll follow recruiters and staffing managers who regularly tweet about fresh live job openings. There are also new job sites popping up that interface with Twitter, such as tweetmyjobs.com and twitterjobsearch.com. In the past, 
your primary venue for getting in front of recruiters was to email your resume using a distribution service. Recruiters receive hundreds of resumes in their inboxes from these services, so your chances of being seen were slim to none. And you now you can just send a message to a recruiter who has tweeted relevant job postings. You'll have a much better opportunity to stand out from the crowd of candidates. Your message might sound like this. Just email my resume for product manager opening. I've helped similar calls, uh, companies gain a double-digit market share. We'll follow up early next week. Note that the key here is the hint of value to come and initiate initiative to follow up. Also, uh, you can tap the hidden job market as never before using Twitter. Search Twitter on site or sites related to Twitter for the names of hiring managers, influencers, potential co-workers, or people in the news affiliated with your target employers, and see who comes up. Uh, or use LinkedIn to find company and insider contacts and then f follow them on Twitter. For those who don't know about Twitter, Twitter allows you to create relationships with people simply by reading their tweets, knowing how they think, understanding their values, and getting a glimpse of their personal lives. Enables you to create deeper connections and relationships when it comes time to network or interview. Also, Twitter is the fastest way to grow a large and diverse network in your area of expertise. Um, it is a systematical... Uh, in that you can f follow almost anyone on Twitter that you want, except the small number of people who protect their tweets. And other social media sites operate uh, symmetrically. You and your contact both agree that you will connect. LinkedIn suggests that you connect only with those you know well. And the Facebook model is based around the concept of friends who must first approve your request to connect. No matter how your search technology changes, one fact remains constant. Purposeful, generous networking continues to be the most effective way to find new opportunities and build your career. And luck is what happen, happens when preparation meets opportunity. And Twitter enables you to intersect with far more possibilities than you could on your own. So I'm going to give you an example of uh, a case in point. Suzanne was looking for speakers for her monthly thought leader forum offered through Career Coach Academy. When reviewing her Twitter stream one day, she found a white paper on how to leverage Facebook and seeing value in the information. Retweeted it. The Twitter user who originally posted the tweet sent her a private thank you. Conversation and ensued. She learns that the individual was not only an author, but the brains behind the popular news site, linkup.com. Susan ended up finding the speaker she needed, and that uh, whoever posted the tweet found another audience to tell people about his work. Now, Twitter also um, helps you be around a wide range of audience. So you don't have to be exactly posting stuff that you post on Facebook, but you want to be a little bit clearer about how you want your profile to convey and your posting as well to convey only positive tweets, not negative. So let's say you are uh, scheduled for an important networking meeting or interview and need information quickly. You can get it by just tweeting it on your uh, on, on the Twitter account. Also, Twitter uh, exposes you to diverse perspectives that expand your thinking. In the way that taking a vacation to a foreign country expands your viewpoint, and Twitter expands your perspective for possibilities. Communicating with others from across the globe without the time and expense of travel brings new ideas, insights, and innovations. Now, let's say you're writing a cover letter or preparing for an interview. 
A Twitter search on the company name can reveal information that other candidates won't yet have. So now it's bingo. You, ha you, you now have an edge over your competition. You can follow executives to get a real feel for corporate culture. For um, example, tweets from Zappos CEO Tony Hesse. And he gives a wonderful insight into the fun but down-to-business flavor of the successful online shoe company. You can uncover potential problems or office politics at target companies and decide whether that will impact your desire to work there. So we have a lot of knowledge that can expand f using Twitter, and Twitter is just a great place to search for jobs. Um, I'm going to go forward with how, why people don't use Twitter. People might complain and say um, those messages are not useful and no one writes anything interesting on Twitter. But um, Twitter is really, you can start writing something interesting and that other people can just look at your messages and try to answer your questions. And it's Think of it like text messaging. And it's more, it, or it's like better than email or phone, you know. Now think about people say, I don't have time or I have, um, or I'll have to be on it all the time. Twitter is not really that much uh, time to take. You can be, you can just invest maybe 15 minutes a day looking for jobs, contacting um, recruiters. And people think that Twitter is for kids. Not at all. It's not for kids. It's not just for them. It's also for professionals. And you might think that nobody will read your tweets. Uh, you have to be a little bit active so people will know that you are actually active and they will want to get into your messages that you post on Twitter. Now, there are... Three social medias, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, that you can search for jobs. And when it comes to social media sites that relate to job search, the most popular are Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Now, Facebook is the largest, uh, largest social media out there. And LinkedIn is a close to second, adding approximately 1 million users every two weeks and more than 50 million users at the time of writing and uh, your post on the LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is also accepted for business networking tool. It has many features, including the ability to see your network within three degrees. Uh, it makes it popular destination. However, um, as with Facebook, your participation is restricted by group and individual connections. On Twitter, this boundary does not exist because the choice of where to follow or be followed is less restrictive. You can block other Twitter users from following you, but the default, unless you have protected your tweets from the public, is to allow them to follow you. And although Twitter keeps its total number of users' accounts close to the vest, you can track the number of tweets and the numbers are astounding. Now... Let's say that we have people who would opt in uh, to become your friends. People need to approve you to connect on Facebook or LinkedIn. When you opt in, your business associates must approve your invitation to connect. And in some cases, you may not be able to invite someone to link to you unless you have some prior connections. And on Twitter... You can opt out. You can follow virtually anyone you want. The majority of Twitter users do not block access. And now let's say that oh, how Twitter is set apart from other social media. So a Twitter has no resume or interest. And you only get to write very short bio about yourself. You can just link and write a background. 
you can have you can make friends and new connections faster on Twitter than you can on Facebook or LinkedIn, as I said before. And on Twitter, the barrier to entry in developing relationship is low, but the potential for return on investment is high. Following someone is as key as a, is easy as a click. Approval of followers is rarely required. On other sites, users have to approve connections or friends before you can engage in regular one-to-one contact. And this facilitates engagement. So how do you use Twitter? And you can use Twitter by just going on search. For example, you are searching for staffing agency. Uh, in I don't know, I'm located in New York. So let's say I'm assuming that you are searching a staffing agency in New York. And then you have all the list of people that own staffing agencies. And you can just go to their profile. They put their contact information. And you can just call them up. And you can also look at their postings, what they put or what they tweeted about, if they have any job openings. You can just, you know search over there and see how many job opportunities are out there on facebook you can do the same thing i think they have a, also an icon that says jobs and you can just click on it and type whatever position you're looking for for whatever location you are at and it will show you uh, the jobs you can apply for i have also job postings um posted at UGNS Staffing Solutions, and I'm based in U.S., so if you are looking for a job, you can just go to that Facebook page, UGNS Staffing Solutions, and you will see uh, the jobs that are matched for you. In the meantime, if you have any questions, you can go on Facebook, Let's Talk Careers with Sarah, and I'm going to help you answer the question that you are looking for, the answer. And also, if you want to join my group, uh, Facebook group, that uh, Let's Talk Careers Inner Circle. And I can just, you can, you can join the community in there. So now you want to have a Twitter account. So before you even start writing your profile, you have to understand that employers are Googling you. And what is exactly do you want them to read about you? What is exactly that they are um, thinking of you? What do you want them to think of you? So writing anything negative in your tweets will kill your candidacy for a position. So it's essential to know and take steps to control the path of your online footprints. And if you are new to managing your online identity, you may find that you have accumulated some level of digital dirt that I call it negative tweets. So hopefully that this you did not even start and did not do. So I'm going to give you some steps what you need to do. First, you need to build an online portfolio. So online portfolio, you can buy a domain name and set up a website to serve as an electronic platform highlighting your skills, experience, and accomplishments, and it will act as a keyword Latin showcase to display your resume, bio, and various of self-marketing documents, along with links to articles. Um, you may have published information on conference panels where you have you may have participated, transcripted from speaking engagements, and so on. I'll give an example of... Um, pizza guy that has three positions for a pizza guy right so one is a counter person one is a store manager and one is a director so how each can brand themselves by just working for uh, the same company so one will say that um, three of them have the career brand that is diligently tackles every job with buoyancy so the brand statement for the pizza counter person will say, I tackle every job as though it's the most important job in the world. And if there are people involved, that's even better. For the store manager, they will just say, um, 
It's the same thing, such as I tackle every job as though it's the most important job in the world. And if there are people involved, that's even better. And they will add, customers engage, teams have fun doing more, and profits go up. So the managers and the directors say the same thing about profits, that they go up. So what is your branded value proposition? That means you are, how are you different than any other candidates? So for a counterperson, pizza guy will say, when I make work fun, customers stick around longer and buy more. And then tell their friends who come and stick around longer and buy more. And then tell their friends, etc. That means more money for my boss. And for a store manager, branded value proposition would be, I increase store sales by as much as 37% by using my natural ebullience and diligence to create a great physical environment and rolly, rollicking dedicated teams that get customers feeling great about buying pizza. For a director, will say, I deliver double-digit profit, increase Increases in a bad economy by infusing contagious energy across the region, engaging teams, and attracting evangelistic customers. So for each job, no matter what position you are holding, you just have to understand that you have to know your branded value proposition. And how do you get to know your value branded proposition? So here is um, something for you to do, like a homework. And I hope that you have time right now to take a pen and a paper and start writing what I have to tell you in this homework. So the homework is you need to know um, fit, external fit and internal fit. Fit is FIT. So for external FIT, F is function, I is industry or interest, and T is for things that matter. So function, what do you do? Your innate strengths, passions, talents, and skills. Write it down on the list. And then for your interest, write where you will do it. Industry, company, specialty, sector. And T, for things that matter, which values and priorities are at top of list? For example, compensation, organizational culture, commute, travel, good boss such such that now for the internal fit fit is fulfillment identity and type so why you work your purpose for being on this planet linking your work to purpose will take your job from a career to a calling identity who are you identity is essential to brand it captures who you are how you want to be perceived and how you bring value to your work world. Type, how you work best based on personality type. When your work complements these preferences, you'll be energized, creative, productive, and in demand. So by following this exercise, you'll be able to brand yourself. Now, I want you to also write another list. Another list that will be such as fill in the blank. For example, this is continuation of how you brand yourself. So we'll start with the first one. Write down. I've always been recognized for blank. It can be anything for sales, for closer, for uh, generous, genius. The second thing is if there were one word to describe me, it would be blank. What makes me different from others who do the same job is that I blank. Throughout my career as a blank, right, you write a title, I've always been drawn to blank. At the heart of my experience are these three strengths, blank, blank, blank. I'm passionate about blank. I feel I'm living my destiny when I blank. Both and clients frequently compliment me for blank. I'm very good at blank. By just doing this exercise, you will be able to write your profile for your twi- Twitter account. Now, think about also 
your career brand. So analyze results and look for patterns about how you apply your personal brand to benefit those you work for and with, in business terms, stakeholders. Write down all the patterns you see. You can whittle them down later. Now, don't say it helped make things more productive. Just uh, be a little bit more specific, okay? If you say it it makes things more productive, then ask, then what? You know, and then ask, and then you say we had more revenues. We had more revenues, then what? We were able to increase the top line from 0% to, to 100% at the bottom of line for the 20 to 30%. And then you ask yourself, then what? The company was able to invest in the new equipment. And then what? We went from being number seven to number two in the marketplace. Then you can start asking the question and then what? And then what? Once your information is tied not only to the bottom line, but the ultimate impact of your accomplishment. So basically, this is what you need to do in your uh, Twitter profile. Now, I want to continue and ask you this. When you are searching for a job, okay, now what motivates you? For some, it motivates them by making more money or saving money, saving time, uh, make work easier or solve a specific problem, be more competitive or you want just to build relationships when you find a new job, uh, or you want to expand business, attract new customers, retain existing customers. It is all, you have to just, it's just an example of what others get motivated by. So this is just, uh, you have to understand also what motivates you. And please, please do not tell others at the interview why you want a job and you say because of the money please don't say any of that stuff because it's not going to help you to get a job by saying this now um i'm going forward to discuss about um how do you brand yourself in your resume when you're considering looking for jobs on Twitter, there are several things that you have to understand. First, you need to align your assets with market needs. That means that you have to see what your strengths are, what positions you're looking for, and what exactly they need. So observe how others with similar interests present themselves on Twitter or other social media sites such as LinkedIn.com. This can give you ideas on how to position yourself. Then you need to articulate your assets into a compelling brand. So once you understand how your assets intersect with market needs, you'll be able to articulate into concise personal marketing material. So it has to be woven throughout your resume, networking sound bites and behavioral interviewing response stories. Then you need to target specific companies before they publish job openings. This is a hidden job market and this is crucial. If you don't target specific companies that are a good fit with your background, you will be able to distract and will indiscriminately chase positions that you hear about or find online. Um, let's say like... Uh, positions for marketing or sales or secretary and depending on the size of your industry consider starting with at least 25 to 50 companies sending out your resumes to them and see what you get and you can search companies that are using twitter and follow them and follow them more often um next i want to you also to understand uh Issues that can help you for structuring your research 
on each of your target companies. So first you need to know the trends, organizational culture, and positioning yourself. So find out what are the trends, whether positive or troubling for the company or industry. How is the company responding to those trends? Then people hire people, not automations. And if hiring managers has to choose between you and another candidate of equal qualifications and the other candidate is a better fit personality-wise and culture-wise, then you will lose. Um, include positions, projects, problems, and people on, uh, on your Twitter and find out, research the positions you are targeting. Is it an old or new position? Who was in the position previously to you? How does the role interact with other functions and impact the bottom line for the company? And what are the key deliverables expected in that position in the next 30, 60, 90 days? And what projects are either on the table now or slated for the future? How can you contribute to them? What problems are standing in the way of success? How can you be part of the solution? And finally, who are the players to whom you could re- who, to whom you would report? Who influences the hiring manager's decision? Who would your coworkers be? Who are your customers and users? And what's important to them? Uh, you can pose many of your questions on Twitter and with other social media sites to expand your research. And type the phrase, I need help with blank in Twitter search box, you find people who might need your skills. Then you need to gain an advantage with endorsements. Endorsements are recommendations from people or influencers whom a hiring managers like respect and trust. Influencers might be bosses or supervisors of the hiring manager, Co-workers, subordinates, advisors, customers, clients, vendors, strategic partners, or industry thought leaders. They might even be the hiring manager's next-door neighbors or friends from the gym. Your network tactically recommends you when it retweets your thought leadership. They will be more likely to do so if you have also retweeted and recommended them. Then you need to cover your basis for applying to publish jobs. So um, post your resume on your target company's website. Then search on Indeed.com or SimplyHire.com, which aggregate jobs from all job boards. And there is another one that uh, you can look up. It calls LinkUp.com, which searches the job posting on more than 20,000 company websites. And choose a couple of niche sites and regional job boards from Ayers Job Board and Recruiting Technology Directory. You can go to AyersDirectory.com and check postings at Craigslist.org as well since the aggregation don't pick up jobs from this site. Next, um, embrace job search as marketing and uh, use radar screen activities to link up, pop up, and follow up. Job search is basically marketing, which um, you will be more to your advantage with you as the product and the employer as the consumer. Link up regularly with your key influencers through phone calls, emails, and face-to-face meetings. Shoot for daily meeting with your various contacts, Pop up unexpectedly on Twitter and other social media sites. Out of sight means out of mind in the online world and follow up relentlessly on commitments you have made. For some, job loss can invite a host of unwanted feelings and beliefs. From shame and embarrassment to denial and self-sabotage to an exaggerated sense of anger and fatality, Self-defeating, self-talk and shoes, I will never find a job, I'm not good enough, networking events are a waste of time, what's the point of Twitter anyway? Giving in to the inner struggle can make job seekers feel isolated, insecure and immobilized. 
but there are helpful tips that I can help you with taking control of those inner struggles. So job seekers who regularly remind themselves of the truth about greater success than those who don't. For example, you have a unique thumbprint that will bring value to employers and you have more control in the process than you think. In fact, you might be pleasantly surprised by what you can accomplish with a little effort. So first you need to connect with others who can emphasize and help uh, on Twitter. And then you can find perspective and hope, identify and follow positive sources of encouragement from Twitter. And expand your network and webs of support. For example, you can type in job seekers on wefollow.com and twellof.com and to find events and people to expand your web of support and don't overlook following your professional associations on twitter to say to stay connected with people trends and continuing education opportunities you can also take a break from your job search find lists of people to follow with common hobbies one job seeker who love to need Followed, for example, Knitted.com on Twitter. And the diversion added some life balance and buoyancy to help to her day. And be sure to put limits on your activities so you don't lose track of time. Then you can also convert Twitter conversations to FaceTime connections. And consider offline events such as Meetup.com groups for job seekers. Um, uh, there are some Twitters that called Career Folk and Shandell. They host programs near uh, New York City, if you are from New York, and other career coaches offer this service nationwide. And don't limit yourself to organized events. Many use Twitter's advanced search functions to find people in their area and have in-person impromptu tweet-ups. Job seekers should remember that the choice of when, how, and with whom to connect, both online and off, remains a personal decision. Take steps to protect your safety throughout the process. Be careful about sharing your insecurities, doubts, and fears on Twitter. Employers can access your entire Twitter timeline if they know the right place to look. If you feel compelled to express negative feelings on Twitter, create a separate anonymous account, for example, at Frustrated. Uh, that doesn't point to your true identity in any way. And I find that um, in the end, the cure is this. If you persevere and work hard, you will find a job. And this is something that you should be also thinking like that in a positive way you might be asking where can i find list of recruiters how do i work with recruiters who can connect me with recruiters why won't recruiters call me back why do recruiters want to talk with me only when i am employed why didn't the recruiter answer my email these are some of the most common questions i hear on twitter in in our you know, social media. For job seekers, the world of the recruiter, sometimes called hand hunter, and not be confused with the employment agency, is shrouded in mystery and frustrating to job secure, uh, seekers. And recruiters are sometimes just as frustrated when job seekers don't get how they work. Their first priority is the company that hired them to find the proverbial needle in the haystack, not the job seeker. And not surprisingly, there are some recruiters who are leveraging the power of Twitter. And it's in an alphabetical order by Twitter username. And I'm going to show you some nuggets from uh, my conversations in tweet style, of course. There is one who tweeted uh, on Twitter saying, don't just sit on the sidelines join in on the fun. If you don't tweet, no one will know who you are. Twitter helps you to get to know you, to get known. And also make sure you put keywords in your bios. 
If you are a total caretaker, put it in its searchable and recruiters will find you. When cold calling a prospective employer, you are asking them to buy something, and the something is you. Finding the right boss is nearly as important to your happiness as finding the right mate. And when you are searching for a job, anything and everything you do is being evaluated, including your email and voicemail. Being asked back for six interviews at one company is not a hurdle, it's an opportunity. Even if your old boss resembled Attila the Hun, you need to find their redeeming qualities to discuss in an interview. Another suggestion from Twitter, to be found easily by recruiters, list your job title first. Don't clutter your uh, bio with extraneous info. Use a LinkedIn link to the web URL. URL. And there is no reason for you to have a dark fuzzy picture or one in which you have a tiny face that no one can see. And list your Twitter account at username on your business card resume, LinkedIn profile, so people can easily find and follow you. Also use hashtags with industry-specific terms in your tweets because recruiters often search for, for hashtags when looking for candidates. And if recruiters contact you with job leads that aren't right for you, ask if they would like you to retweet the lead to your network. Another suggestion is uh, job seekers need to understand they are a product they must uh, position package and promote themselves throughout the search. Understand the 80-20 rule. Give before you get. For example, you have to give 80 of yourself, 80% of yourself, and, and you get 20%. As important as it is a plug into centers of influence, give value first. Intelligently, tweet five to six times a day. Uh, for every five tweets, four should give, and one good point to an accomplishment, online, white paper, etc. And if I was beating the bushes for a job today, I would be on the phone rather than keyboard. You can get tangled in emails and tweets. In the end, hiring is a belly-to-belly -belly situation. A contact sport's not something done with technology and tools. There must be relationship. People don't understand how inundated recruiters are. Their inbox is full every day. You must find a way to raise your head above the noise. And savvy recruiters have their list of candidates they follow closely. Find a way to get on that targeted recruiter's hot list. Another advice from t uh, Twitter, a search and split. A tag recruiters used to source candidates and share commissions with other recruiters. If hired recruiters keep 100%, you both win. And if you are an open networker, Tweet, are we connected on LinkedIn yet? And include your LinkedIn URL to build connections. And every conversation, every email, every tweet is part of job interview process. Be professional every step of the way. Don't get too casual. And many recruiters go straight from meeting you on Twitter to checking your LinkedIn profile. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is professional. See job leads posted by recruiter, but you don't um, but you don't fit, refer a colleague who does. That's a great way to build relationship with recruiters. And I want to emphasize that if you don't know how to make your LinkedIn profile professional, then you can contact me on Facebook, Let's Talk Careers with Sarah, and I can guide you through it. Or you can post on, and you can join my group even on Facebook, Let's Talk Careers Inner Circle, and you can just post that question, and the members are going to help you with that. Another uh, tip is if you only tweet one to two times a day, it won't be enough for anyone to get to know you. Manage your time carefully, but do spend time to build relationships. More advice from Twitter. Uh, using Twitter to look for a job, complete your bio and use hashtags accurately. Clarity on candidate side helps hiring managers scout you out. And the biggest mistake candidates make is looking at job searches as if it is a transaction and not an organic process that develops over time. Job seekers flattery never hurts. Show you have done your homework about 
me or my company, that's a good way to grow conversations. And show, should you direct message a recruiter that you have applied for their job, it's okay, but don't ask for help. Just say, hey, I have applied. Facebook is your personal side. Uh, LinkedIn is your professional side. Twitter is your everything, professional and personal. Your core Twitter group are your research assistants. Pick them well. Uh, the final info to you, it just comes to you. You can act upon it. And know what, you, what your aim is, what you are about, uh, what you can do. Telling a recruiter you can do anything is like telling him you can do nothing. Get to know people. Do favors. Be a source. Suggest people to a recruiter. A little interaction can go a long way with recruiters. I use Google, and if someone writes a tweet that I'm interested in, it might just show up if it's got a good SEO, search engine optimization. That could get me connected. And research, get to know me. I'm more likely to contact you if you read my latest post or ask about blog, Twitter, cycling. Just build connection. And bloggers have a passion and expertise. Recruiters, employers, media, uh, like or follow good bloggers. Twitter is the billboard for your blog. Uh, sometimes it's hard to write a blog, but on LinkedIn, you can just start writing articles. Imagine like this is your online blog. Follow recruiters and check out their Twitter list. In 15 to 20 minutes, you can build yourself a captive audience as a job seeker and create a dashboard using iGoogle or other tool to receive industry news, alerts, news on your name and RSS feeds of key people you follow. And make it clear on your Twitter bio that you are open to new opportunities and include keywords in your bio. It helps your quotas find you. College students soon to graduate, say you, so you in your Twitter Say so in your Twitter bio so recruiters know your status. And test your findability. Can you find yourself using search.twitter.com, advanced search functions? If not, add keywords to your bio. In job search, a resume will get a grand total of 10 to 30 seconds of attention on a good day. And I believe that by using the same techniques you use to write effective tweets, you can develop a resume with career building precision and power that maximizes those 30 seconds, entices a second read, and it compels a call to interview, and to do it in 20 to 30 tweets. When people on Twitter ask for your resume, follow their directions for how they would like to receive it. Typically, they will ask you to email it and will likely provide their email address via direct message. Alternatively, if you keep your resume online somewhere, for instance, at your own website or at a service such as visualcv.com, you could also share the link to it in a tweet. And what is a tweet fit resume and why use one? So imagine tweeting your way to a resume. Imagine a resume with one employer attracting sentence in the middle of the page, your bio, for example. That power-packed value message is on the core around which you build a tweet fit resume. Imagine creating a cluster of tweets that defines the, that value, a cluster that defines your career impact, a cluster that describes your most recent positions, a cluster of tweets that describe your impact and best accomplishments. Your job is to make it simple as possible for an employer to read your resume, understand your value, and contact you. A tweet fit resume looks like a resume, but it, it is, its content is so well defined, so targeted, and so easy to read that a traditional job graveyard resume just can't match its impact. In today's answer to employers, limited time, limited attention, and limited opportunities. Through precision and clarity, it stands out and commands attention. It says you are a clear thinker, clear thinker of high value. It says you are willing to step outside the box. It says you are different and desirable. I understand that creating a precision personal marketing document focused on one goal 
as opposed to one size fits all, may feel radically different and radically risky in an economy where the stakes are high. It takes real courage to step away from the norm. But I also believe that with a great risk comes great reward. So let's just um, sum it up a little bit. So tweet fit resume is less wording than a traditional resume and it takes more time to write and requires deep preparation on a brand and a value level so there are 10 steps and i'll be very short because i'm running out of time uh develop branded value proposition is number one what's your tweet what is your sweet spot what's your most critically important thing that you do with your brand and at work and before writing a tweet fit resume be sure you have read uh, other people's resume so you understand exactly how to fit in and research your best fit determine the industry and employers you like and for whom you have the most value uh, determine how your branded value fits current market need why should employers salivate to hire you prove the past and potential impact of what you have done so that an employer will salivate to hire you and establish your resume's overall design above the full profile structure the for example the real estate that is the top one third to one half of your resume is where they capture attention and build the reader's interest um so i said develop branded value proposition research your best feed brand to now think impact and strategize content and format now we're going to go over the other five steps uh, power your resume will you use a tagline in your profile a personal or career brand statement what else will be in your profile that proves your value suggest so potential and maximize the key above the full positions Strategize company and position placements. Decide how many companies and positions you will feature and how you will feature them. How many companies and positions will you showcase? What will you feature in education and activity sections? Do you have gaps or underemployment to hide? Are there other issues to be strategized? Then you create tweet clusters. These will be succinct. Um, about 240 characters or so phrases that describe the preceding qualifications with power punch of precision. They should fit into your strategic resume format. They must answer the employer's assumed questions. So what? And why should I, why should I care? Then you nest. Place these tweets clusters within a traditional resume components, including a heading, company name, position, dates, education, professional activities, and so on. And then you review and revise and repeat all over again if it's necessary. Don't rest until you document is it defined, powerful, and irresistible. So I'm going to end this um, show. I want to say thank you so much for being here with me tonight. If you have any questions about Twitter or your resume, uh, you can reach me out on Facebook. Let's talk careers with Sarah. And uh, you can also reach me on Twitter at writing to 2015.